Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be covering Cisco Packet Tracer 6.2.4.4 titled Configuring IPv6 Static and Default Routes. To begin, you'll want to open your Packet Tracer and Instructions. I'd recommend printing out your addressing table at the very least. Um, it might also be helpful to print out the network topology diagram just so you have it readily available and you don't have to sift around trying to find these IPv6 addresses. This takes a little bit more time than an IPv4, but all of the concepts are the same, most of the commands are the same, um, so it's not too big of a leap to go from the IPv4 to the IPv6. Uh, the first time I ran through this on my own, it took me just over a half hour just double checking everything that I did. Hopefully the video here will be a little bit quicker than that. Alright, so to begin, we are going to examine the network and evaluate the need for the static routing. Then we're going to configure the IPv6 static and default routes. And then finally, we will verify connectivity between our devices on these separate network segments. All right, so in this activity, we will configure those static and default routes. Um, a static route is one that has been entered manually, generally by the network administrator in order to create a route that is reliable and safe. There are four different static routes used in this activity. First will be a recursive, then will be a directly attached static route, and a fully specified static route, and then a default route. So going through the instructions, uh, part one, question A. Looking at the topology diagram, how many networks do we have in total? We've got one down here, one here, one here, router to router, another here, router to router, and a fifth up here at the top, so five in total. How many networks are directly connected to router 1, router 2, and router 3? Router 1 and router 3 both have two networks directly connected. So router 3, you have the router to router for 1 and the switch PC for 2. On router 1, you have router to router for 1 and switch PC for 2. So those are your two networks for each of those. Um, router 2 has three networks directly connected. We have router to router for 1, router to router for 2, and switch PC for 3. The next question, which command is used to configure IPv6 static routes? We're definitely going to be showing this. Um, I'm just going to give it to you verbally here for this portion. The command is IPv6 route network address next hop address. And so we'll take a look at what exactly that looks like and what that means as far as this network's topology goes. Before we can enable, or before we can configure um, static IPv6 routes, we have to configure the router to forward IPv6 packets. And to do that, we're going to, do the, going to give this command to all three routers. We're going to enable configure terminal and here at the global mode, we're going to give them the command IPv6 unicast routing. The other command that you could probably get away with using is just IPv6 supposed to be routing or router router, IPv6 router or IPv6 unicast routing. I'm going to use unicast routing. And so we're going to do that for all three of these routers. That's the first thing we're going to do. PV6 unicast routing. This allows us to set these IPv6 static routes. Six unicast routing. Okay. So now they're enabled to handle IPv6. We're going to move to part two, step two, and we're going to set up recursive static routes to every network not directly connected to R1. So we're going to need a route to here, another route to here between these routers for this network, and a third one to this network down here. So let's hop into router one, command line interface. I like to hit enter a couple times just to give me a little bit of space. And let's get started. So the command, as I mentioned earlier, was IPv6 space route. And then we need the network address and then the next hop address. 
and using the uh, IPv6 addressing table, we can complete the command as such. So there's our network address that we're trying to connect with, and here is our next hop address. So there's one down. We have two more to configure. IPv6 route 2001 DB8 1A002 slash 64 next hop 2001 DB8 1A001 colon colon 2 And so we'll notice that on all three of these, the next hop is going to be the same. And we'll go back and look at the network topology to see why that is. And our third network is 2001 DB813 colon colon slash 64. The next hop will again be the same. And so we're going to look at this a little bit backwards here. We're going to look at the next hop and see why that is. If we look over at our addressing table, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. We can see that we are connecting to the serial 000 interface on router 2. So from router 1, we're connecting to right here for our next hop. And then if we look at the individual networks that we're connecting to. Let's see if I can get this small enough to work here. We have our first network up here, which is our first command. So right here to this network. The second network here is right here, this router to router, R2, R3. And our third and final network is this segment down here at the bottom right. So we've set up the routes from router 1 to those three networks. Alright. Up next we're going to go to step 3 under part 2. Configure a directly attached and fully specified static route on R2. So this is going to be from R2 to the R1 LAN. So from router 2 we're going to come down here to the router 1 LAN. And the command to do this, we're going to go IPv6 route, just like we've been doing. The network address, 2001 DB8 1 1 colon colon slash 64. And then we need to give it the interface to send all this traffic out from, which was that serial 000. If we look, we can see that for just a brief second there. Serial 0. So we add that in here. Serial 0, 0, 0. And the last thing that we need to add into that is that next hop address, which is going to be the, IP, the IPv6 address for this serial interface on router 1. Looking at our addressing table, the serial face for router 1 is right here. 2001 DB8 1 A001 colon colon 1 slash I don't think you need the slash 64 on the next hop. It'll pick it up um, from your network address here. So you don't need the slash 64 on the end of this. So we set that up the, that was the fully specified static route to the R1 LAN. Now we need to do the same thing for the R3 LAN over here. And the command is going to be the same. We're just going to change the network address to be the network address for this LAN. And our serial interface now is going to be serial 1. And then our next hop is going to be the interface on R3. So it'll be the IP address here. Right there. Alright, so let's go ahead and get that built. 
IPv6 route 2001 db8 1 3 colon colon slash 64 over interface S001 and the next hop is going to be 2001 db8 1 a002 colon colon 2 And so what we did there, we set up the IPv6 route for this network to come out of this interface with the next hop of this interface. All right. We move down to step four, configure a default route on router three. So I'm gonna go ahead and close router two and open up command line interface for router three. And the command for a recursive default route is pretty simple. IPv6 route. We're going to give it colon colon slash zero. Remember with IPv4 it was 0, .0, 0, 0, 0. This is the equivalent of that for IPv6. We're going to tell it to go out of serial 1 interface. Which if we double check that here, that should be this interface. You can see it there for just a brief second. 0, 1. And then our next hop is 2001 DB8 1A002 colon colon 1. And so now we've configured that static recursive route, the default route, for R3. Alright. Once we've completed that, we want to verify static route configurations. Um, which command is used to verify the IPv6 configuration of a PC from the command prompt? Let's go ahead and hop in here. And you should be able to find that by doing ipconfig forward slash all. And there we are, IPv6 address. It's a little bit split there. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. So here's our IPv6 address for this computer. So that ipconfig forward slash all, with the switch all there, will show you your IPv6 address for a computer from the command prompt. And then from a router, what command will display the IPv6 address configured on a specific interface, or on an interface? We are going to use router1 for this. And we can run the command show, well, let's go exit, get back to our privilege exec mode. Show IPv6 interface brief. Makes it a little bit bigger so it's not so split up. So this looks like it's not going to change anything. But this shows us the IPv6 addresses for the gigabit Ethernet 00, 01. and our serial zero zero. So that serial zero 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 is connected out to our router R2. Alright, the next step is to see which command displays the contents of the IPv6 routing table. And to do that we can issue the command show IPv6 route. And we'll get a whole lot of information here. Let me expand this a little bit more. And so these are the current contents of our routing table. You can hit enter to go down and finish loading all of the information. Alright. So part three for this is to verify connectivity. So we're going to do that with a ping or a trace route, actually. Let's do trace route from PC1 over to PC2. DB8, 1, 2, colon, colon, F. And so we can see each step or each hop along the route over to PC2, which is our final destination for that packet. We could have done a ping just to make sure we had connectivity first, and the command would have just been ping, then the address. 
and we'll see that we have that connectivity. You can do the same thing over to PC3. So we can see there is an additional step or an additional hop. So going from PC1 to PC2, we came through router 1, router 2, passed through the switch state to PC2. To get to PC3, we had to come through router 1, through router 2, through router 3 to get to PC3. So that way you can verify that you are touching each device as your traffic gets sent to the destination. Um, it looks like that covers everything for this activity. As always, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them below for me, and hopefully I will see you all in my next video.